so yeah, this is what the uh, uh, granola eating uh, cunts of the world think uh, uh, in unison. <laughs> I mean, they must look at themselves and say, "Am I a granola eating cunt?" Uh, and the answer is yes, yes, I am. Therefore, the guardian is you. Yes, I'm happy. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, Russell's got his little thinky face on. Ooh, I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Good for you, Russell. Good for you, darling. Uh, Russell, you say, said the end of BBC is undoubtedly on its way. Do you know why the end of the BBC is undoubtedly on its way? Because it will face a reckoning for all its woke shit. If, the, if it was the BBC of 2015, 2020, uh, yeah, 2015, or 2010, or 2009, it would never go under. If it was the... Uh, um, yeah, if it, if it was the BBC of, of yesteryear, it would never go under. The woke shit they relentlessly pile out is why nobody's has its back. Nobody's had this hit stay other than you granola eating crunchy assholes who have lectures and lectures, lectures us and lectures us. Um, man and woman, uh, I'm so here. One sec, can I play that scene? I think it's you know what, when we're talking about it, it's worth. Uh, do I have this on uh, MP4? Uh, I think it's worth, you know, reinvestigating the crimes, right, of Ross Sue Davis. Because, <laughs> again, this this was really awful. Imbecile. Oh, uh, what was it called? Uh, uh, RTD, let's see, do I have it here? Uh, Starbucks, fire. Can I get that clip? Let me get that. I, I, I hate all of this, right? Uh, I, I hate all of this. Uh, Do they have the answer yet? Wait, wait, where's the... Uh, one second. Is it, is it here? Your own name. Oh, the shit! Ah, oh, stop. Ah, uh, hate every moment of this. Yeah, it worked so much better when it was um, not this. Here, here, is this the, uh, the infamous line? But there is a way to get rid of it. Something a male presenting Time Lord will never understand. Exactly, look at that. But I came right into that. Look at the smug. Oh, fuck you. Why is this inspirational? Just let it go. And we choose to let it go. Yeah, not all the special effects of the world can make that performance. All music can make that performance work. Sorry, darling. Here, where's the... Uh, oh, here it is. Here, here's her line where she says she's stunning and brave. Oh, God, I, it, 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 I hate this so much. Closing down all psychedelic lightwave emanators and transferring excess power to the broken dome for pixelators. Mum! Can you hear me? Mum! Doctor! I think it's safe for you to come down now. Rose? Too much power for one person, but you had a child! And the meta crisis passed down a shared inheritance. Binary, non-binary. Oh fuck me! Oh, so cringe. Binary. It was always there, shining out of us. A... I can't. Okay, fine. It, yeah, this is why it sucked. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry you're so proud of yourself. This is why it sucks, right? Fine. So that's why it's going... Okay. The reason the BBC is going down is the same reason this is going to go down. I think the BBC might outlast it. It's got to 2027, hasn't it? I think the BBC might outlast Disney. How about that? Didn't it just lose a trillion in its, deal, in its uh, uh, set on out of court with uh, the state of Florida? It literally lost another trillion Yes. Uh, you know what? I feel like that guy from Vincent Varos, right? When he's like, uh, um, 
There's a second or third vote against the governor, right? Like, yeah, he's going down. He's going down. He goes and takes his his wife's uh, or his cellmate's vote. So they're both, yeah, that's what I feel like the BBC. Right? Same thing with Disney, mate. Same thing with Disney. Rosie Liu says the end of BBC is undoubtedly on its way. Yes, it is. You fucked it up. You fucking morons. Right? You socialist absolute moron cunts. Yes, you fucked it up. Uh, uh, Dr. Chenner is trying to ensure that the fancy drama outlasts the broadcaster. Uh, again, but it's this... It, yeah. Look, if Nelson Peltz takes over... Um, oh, oh, Nelson, mate, give me a call. I'll get Dr. Who sorted out. Like, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll have I'll have it ticking over. I'll leave. I'll do Marvel for you as well. I don't even like. I'll do Marvel and Star Wars. I'll ch- I'll only charge you ten million a year, right? All right. I think that's very fair. Do you know how much money I'm going to make you? Oh, ten million a year. It's it's a it's, it's a deal. It's a still. It's a sell. It's a fucking century, mate. Come on, come on. I I like. Pfft. I'll charge Star Trek that just for a consultation, right? They fucked that up so much, but I can fix it as well. Man, we can fix everything. We can fix everything. Ten, ten million a year, but especially Doctor Who. Doctor Who, yeah. I'll get that sorted out for you. We'll get uh, to- to- Toby Whithouse in as a showrunner. Uh, somebody to get. If he doesn't mind, we'll find someone. I think Toby Whithouse is, is, is the way to go. Uh, we'll get get working on past Capaldi seasons. All things are going, right? All things are going. Uh, um, I'm saying you're, you're getting information in. Uh, fine. Fine. Let's say I, I, I know what he's got to say for himself. According to the head of one of the BBC's most successful franchises, that again, he's like butt fucking it right now. Oh, Jake's one soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, the broadcast end is inevitable. You see your demise. It is. Inevitable. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, speaking on a podcast, uh, they like to watch Doctor Who show. Ron Rossi David explains there's a good reason for the fancy drama being co-produced with Disney. It means it's that it's it survival uh, doesn't require the continued existence of the BBC. I, I want to say I don't think it does. Anything that's a saleable property, I think is safe. I, I and I think Doctor Who is a saleable property, and the. That there is an alternative production of it being made is amazing to me. Like, I, why is there not a uh, an American production of Doctor Who? I, I, I'm sure that I mean that'd be really interesting in, in of itself, All right? But um, yeah, there's, again, there's a lot you could do with it. <laughs> anyway. Um, what are we up to? Speaking of, uh, uh, you got to look at the long term. Uh, at the end of the BBC, which is undoubtedly on its way in uh, some shape or form, says Davis. Yeah, again, because you screwed the pooch, right? You, you, you look at all the fucking lecturing and propaganda you, you slip in and fucking everything. That's why. Why do you think nobody watches EastEnders? Oh, you have my my Biden friend uh, uh, asked me if I was watching Kirby Enthusiasm. I said no. Every ten minutes, it's a it's a Trump it's like a Trump derangement syndrome joke. Like, get over it, you cunt. Just get over it. Uh, really, and I mean that with all sense. Just get over it, okay? It's time to get over it. You were wrong about everything. Trump was actually good. I you just got to get over it. It's just called reality. Ah, uh, hate to break it to you, man. John Stewart had this real meltdown because uh, uh, he got he's just a dummy. You know, uh, uh, yeah, this thing. Can I find it? Ah, I'll get to it later. Uh, it's not going to like, no, you've got to prepare for that kind of stuff. The lack of uh, a lavish BBC budget is another reason Davis claims Doxy's future requires his involvement, particularly in a world where high product production are increasing the norm. I, yeah, that, that norm's got to change. If that norm changes, everything gets better. If budgets sink, everything gets better. All right, and you have to rely on on, on writing again. Uh, if do you think I'm going to collapse tomorrow, we have to go making Doctor Who on the norm BBC, but you know what? Uh, we, we would rally around and make uh, make it, and suddenly the story is 
will become claustrophobic ghost stories, he says. Okay, whatever it is, it is. A lot of people would, uh, would like that very much, so I'm not saying uh, yeah, you, you, you have to have this happen, but it, it's happening elsewhere. I think it's unfair that it doesn't happen to Doctor Who. Well, fuck it. I don't care if it's not fair. Who cares if it's fair? Yeah, the, the strongest and the best survive. Right? I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, David's going to run an interview podcast with Jeff Lloyd and Sarah Bar- uh, Barron on topics from Carrington and script writing, the unlikeness of Disney creating Doctor Who style, la- uh, style uh, experience, given that their previous card uh, experience closed due to the lack of profitability, costing tax is 1.1 million. The Doctor Who experience had, cost, uh, had uh, lost a lot of money. It, it wasn't really run properly, I, I hate to tell you. And also, Doctor Who wasn't really run, run pr- uh, properly, sadly. You know, um, it, it, it could have, should have been more imp- uh, uh, more successful. Uh, Davis also claims that the success of his Doctor Who reboot, the BBC doesn't have uh, him contractually tied down. Fuck off then, please. It's like a rolling contract. It's, it's very free. Uh, look, if, if I had enough tomorrow, I could walk out. Well, I wouldn't walk out because... I wouldn't up, uh, I wouldn't let people down, but uh, nothing could trap me. I wouldn't uh, be in a situation where I had to write things. He says, "Okay, I like I, that's great." Again, uh, Toby Warehouse, hard hand take, handbrake change. Just don't try and maintain the continuity. Say uh, again, make it a reboot. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to happen though. That's not about to happen. I love it, but uh, I, look, I think both Disney and BBC are going down, frankly. Right? And you're going to start making shows that appeal to the audience if you still have that opportunity. That's the thing. You've really screwed the pooch in this, mate. You've really, really screwed the pooch, right? You know, um, in many ways, right? What you were talking about, uh, uh, Rossley Davis, let's, let's start over this, talking about Rossley Davis saying the BBC is over. Yeah. BBC is over, and his plan is to uh, make a deal with Disney, so uh, so they'll have a, um, a a stable future go, going forward. And we're starting to see the, that Disney's going down again, again. This is entirely BBC's fault, and it's the same uh, same mistake that Disney's making, and they're going to have the same effect. You know, uh, so BBC is just like a hundred hours worth of TV shows this year as top drama is out from the broadcasters. What they what they what they not making. And, and like frankly, make cheaper drama, fuck face. Really? I mean that how hard is that? Here, one second. Let me give let me give you a cut couple of examples. Let me pull up uh like if you make something of quality, the production mat- uh, values matter a lot less, right? A lot a lot less. So here let me give let me give you uh, 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 an example. Doink. This is from 1978, 1976, I should say. Let me download it. If you hear that music sting, you probably know exactly what I'm, what I'm about to show you. Doink. Share screen. Doink. I'm now about to begin this strange history of my life. Like, like, does this look like cinematic values to you? No. Does it look like you'll be addicted to it? Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, uh, I, oh, we'll go back to that in a second. I just like, but yeah, no, yeah. It, it, Korean dramas are the like the top rated dramas now because they're dramas. Of my family. I'm going to marry you. <laughs> To Uncle Claudius. And you can both come and live in the palace. Oh, well, boy, that's, this is actually uh, a little bit reminiscent of where we are in real life, isn't it? <laughs> Why, we could stage the greatest night of love the world has ever seen. Let me go! Yeah, not without the rabbi, you couldn't, baby. Oh, you fat, drunken cow! I found him in Drusilla's bed, naked, the pair of them. You acted as her pimp and her procurer. That's not true. Liar! <laughs> You forget who I am. Three quality. 
quality. You don't need to uh, pour money. You pour money into something when you don't have quality. The Emperor's wife. We are immortal gods. Kill him. We've talked enough. This puts the Emperor's life in danger. The moment you relinquish your power. I mean, genuinely, genuinely, this is like far more compelling. Oh. You're a dead man. Must get it all down quickly before they finish me off. You know the feeling, mate. Fine, give me another example, of BBC. If BBC were putting out stuff like that, they, 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 there'll be no question of them surviving. But they don't, right? They don't, sadly. Here, yeah, what's this? Uh, that's the wrong one. There we go. Doink. And again, here, this is another example of, uh, I think, great storytelling done with reasonable production values that, that carry me through the story, right? That 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 doesn't look like huge budget c- cinematic releases. Well, the truth is, go watch Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. That also looks cheaper than most stuff on Netflix right now, right? It's crazy. Share screen. And, and, you know, there's hundreds of hours of drama they're losing. No one's going to miss it. No one's going to miss one second of it. Sometimes, sometimes, these hallucinations are better than the real thing, you know? Okay, listen. I, I, uh, the opening up with seeing uh, Joanne, Wa- young Joanne Wa- Wally, before she was Joanne Wally Kilmer, uh, uh, g- giving a handy to Michael Gams, uh, Gambon. That kind of works for me. People in a nurse's uniform. Who can sing in them or dance. I don't mind, I don't mind. I like pictures, I don't care. Honestly. Now, this was a lavish production for its time. This production values, not these production values are fine okay. today. BBC One introduces The Singing Detective. What's it about? Eh? Reginald, I say, what, what's so special? Murder. Good. Killing in that. Well, if you haven't seen this, you got this is fantastic. And women. Loose women. Hello. Some of them are spies, and some of them are, what you call it, Nazis. Um, what was it, Michael, what's his name? Who was it from Minder? Michael Malenheim? He was great in this. Okay, okay, so what's the story? Who's the dame? And where's the body? I'm sorry? There's always a body, too. I know that. You know that. The police found her this morning. Now, is that the bloke from Star Wars? <laughs> you know, is that where, like, you see him in, like, one you know, one scene? I think it is. No. What? She's turned up. I don't know what you're... In the river. While cruising down the river. On a Michael Gambon stars in The Singing Detective. So if the BBC was putting out that, they wouldn't be in trouble. But what they putting out instead... I, I, am I going to show the clip from the Star Beast again? Uh, again? Oh, I'm poor. I'm male and female, and neither. I'm better. Fuck off. So, what they, um, first run in John Roll dropped by 30% uh, to 350 hours. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, I have 350 less hours of you lecturing me with your woke shit, right? I'm fine with that, right? I am 100% fine with that, right? And, and you'll notice the things that people actually like, will call the midwife, will stay. Right, it's uh, um, Doctor Who looks a bit dodgy though, mate. Right, Doctor Who, uh, it and it cuts the children program and reflects the, the why children program should be the cheapest bloody thing they're making. And again, Rossley Davis, I think, cut his teeth on children's program. Right, you know, Dark Season, they were genuinely good, genuinely scary. Man, that's when Tills and TV was good. Um, the uh, content to have. What was it? it? It added the cuts to children's uh, programming reflects the continued need for children's content to have high production values to uh, uh, to cut the co- uh, cut through strong international programming. The way you cut through strong international programming is quality from global streamers and continuing power of social media and YouTube. That's fucking me, you morons! Do you see me having big production fucking values? No! I just sit, sit in front of the camera talking honestly about something I care about. Right, I'm not full of shit. Right, what is up? The annual plan confirmed this uh, dramas including Silent Witness, Call the Midwife, Death in Paradise, Shetland, and Beyond. And Beyond Paradise will return. 
uh, as well as entertainment shows. Gladiators, Claudia Winkle and Fronted, The Traitors, and RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Fuck off. Yeah, really? And you're still spending your money on that, on my money on that. Well, I will say my money. I'm not attacked by anything. My money on that shit, right? You're still spending your money on that shit. Let's fuck off with it. Like, like, I don't need to be wet lectured by you morons. So let's see how Rusty Davis is, le is lecturing us morons today. <laughs> yes. Well, what well, again? What an incredibly shit cover. I think that's worth mentioning every time. What an incredibly shit cover. Who is the is Perry Goodbell still working on there? Who 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 was responsible for this shit? <laughs> Jason Quinn. Bless him. Let's see what he has to say. Okay. I'm not, I, I can watch Jason Quinn all day. Uh how many uh how many sleeps go how many sleeps to go until the new season of Doctor Who? Not enough. Uh, not too many, though the wait seems endless to us. Excitement levels are raising every day. No, they're dropping every day. They, they are literally dropping every single day. Uh, um, here at the DWN hub, deep in the bowels of Panini Towers. To pass the time, Mystic Mike Jones, Rabble Rising, Richard Akinson, and yours truly often try and predict what's going to uh, come in the new episodes. Uh, Mike blew our minds with his prediction that Ruby Sunday's real parents will turn out to be Meta Crisis Doctor and Rose Tyler. God, I hope not. Oh, that sounds awful. Uh, and they had to leave Ruby here to stop her, stop their own universe from unraveling. Is she? Is he right? I hope not. That sounds shit. Uh, I wish I knew for sure. Richard has plenty of predictions to go uh, of his own too. And you can catch up with them on page eight. Again, all this is trash. It's just trash. So indeed, I'm gonna uh, uh, ask for your. Okay, fine. Again, trash. But who's the who's the, the uh, graphic designer on this? Managing director, head of production. Uh, Mark, no Instagram. BBC Studios publishing. Okay, it's, it's a three person team. Fuck me. There's three people working on this. Really. They don't have a graphic designer on, on like you said Perry Goodball working for them uh as permanently, right? No, there's no fuck me. Really? Yeah, one second. That's literally a three-person team. Let's see how many people they had on the team over here. So much better. Uh where is it? Letter from the editor. So editors, okay, Steve, well, the head editor of system, M Emily Cook. Pinini UK. No, they didn't. Who's their graphic designer? I don't know. I don't know. BBC Worldwide. I, I, I have no idea. Okay, back to this anyway. Doink. And again, look, I'm sorry, you can't make Millie Gibson not look gorgeous. And she just looks gorgeous, right? She, I mean, again, one of the reasons I think she has to go, right? She has to go. So let's see what Rusty Davis has to say, right? Because, he, again, his big plan to save Doctor Who is to uh, uh, hook his waggers up to Disney, who are also going down in flames. You want to hook it up to a, a global streamer that where, you, where it'll be solid. Netflix is the only one. Uh, Rusty Davis. They don't even call it a letter from the showrun anymore. Production. Russell T. Davis. That's it. Again, this is so Jason fucking Quinn. Uh, Doctor Who showrun writes exclusively for Doctor Who magazine. It's not like he talks anywhere and everywhere. This issue, keeping secrets out of TV listings, celebrating milestones out of order, and getting a shooty to the Oscars on time. Okay, timey wimey. Oh, just imagine. Timey wimey. It's getting very, uh, very timey wimey in Doctor Who office. Well, one of the big problems this production has, and this is, uh, I believe, Dan's point, and I do very much agree with him on this one. I really do. That um, a big problem it has is that the gestation time between writing and uh, broadcast, right? Yasmin Finney was fine. In 2020, I think, was it 2021 when she, she was announced? It was like, okay, what the hell, right? Uh, uh, and then by the time it came on, we had the complete implosion, right? The complete and total implosion 
of woke economics, right? With uh, Bud Light and Target and basically anything that was aggressively woke got started to get boycotted by people who didn't who weren't interested in it, right? They, they became a major economic force, right? He didn't, and which is like. I think really hit this Doctor Who, right? Hit his era of Doctor Who. He thought the Yasmin Finney trans bullshit was going to go down like a like a uh, you know. Um, I'm trying to think of the right analogy. Go down very well, right? Go down like shooting gun. We're in an interview, right? Go down that well, right? Uh, uh, I don't think he realized it was going. Everything has gone a lot worse than he thought it would, right? Everything. Yeah, he thought the Davros uh, uh, sketch, sketch was going to be going to go. Oh, how marvelous! Oh, at last, uh, uh, how progressive! Yeah, no, we thought it was shit. Literally, we all thought it was shit, mate. Right? Timey wimey, it's all getting very timey wimey. I think you're getting a bit uh, um, shit scared, mate. Uh, in the Doctor Who office, shooting season two before we've transmitted season one, it's a big mistake. Is it is complicated enough? But timescales. Are sliding and overlapping all uh, all over the place. The other day, Liv, you met her, you met Liv in Doctor Who, uh, magazine five nine nine, and you know why I don't remember? Because it didn't it didn't fucking matter. That's why. Uh, was asking me about Billings. Oh God! Now <laughs> you got now you're getting me bored already. Uh, whether you want to say uh, uh, oh Billings, as in not paying for things, as in uh, um, letting spoilers, right? Saying uh, uh, we have this coming up or that coming up. Billings, fine. Uh, uh, whether we wanted uh, something kept secret uh, in a certain episode, I said, that's fine. Uh, that's all revealed in the episode before. But she pointed out that Billings for the later that later episode became available before the previous episode is transmitted. Oh, my head, the time storm. Uh, good call. Well, I'm glad you have somebody, you know, competent doing their job. Um, okay, but yeah, look, I'm having the same problem here. <laughs> Trying to scare, like, so apparently it is uh six fifty in the UK, not nine, not not eight fifty as I thought it was. Okay, uh, at the same time, you might have noticed Scott Hancock's production diary disappear from these pages. It, it, it was a very boring feature. Hate to tell you, no, nothing really happened in that feature. It, it really genuinely, genuinely was dull. Uh, that's because Scott, Scott has moved onwards and upwards at Bad Wall. Congratulations, Scott. You can welcome our new script uh, team, David and his assistants, on the page of the Gallifrey and Guardian this month. Except, look, it's timey wimey again. This information is already is old already. So uh, I looked up the uh, my very first email from David, and it's dated May 30th, 2023. Okay, you see, you see the show. Ah, come back. May third is twenty twenty. You see, the show is so out of sync with perception of it, even uh, even uh, within a magazine as close tied to production as a DWM. Yeah, uh, again, I don't think this is good. Oh, look at this! The shittest TARDIS set ever, and the most expensive. Oh. God. That again. That good luck, everyone. For my quote in. Good luck, everyone. It is the shit as tired as it ever. Uh, so disappointing. Uh, though Scott isn't entirely absent on season two, he stayed on the script dead at the first drafts of episode four because, well, Tommy Wright, you'll see, whatever. Uh, so what's he doing now, I wonder? I, I, I often think... Uh, he still sounds like he's still working at Bad Wolf. I often think the Tommy Wyman this was most evident in the past couple of years was the specials. The power of the Doctor celebrated the 100th uh, birthday... Television celebrated television's 100th birthday within a sto uh, story featuring classic doctors and companions. Was it 100? Not television, BBC's birth, wasn't it? Well, the episode celebrating the sixth anniversary featured John Logie Baird. Wrong way around, surely. Well, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, what, what are the chances of that happening? At the same time, uh, ever since I came back to the job, people have been asking me, if I'm going to do anything for the 2020, uh, 2020 to celebrate the fact that 20 years of, of New Who. Uh, but to be honest, no, sorry, there's not 20 years of New Who. I mean, at best, you could say it went till um, when, did, when was Judah's last episode? Is that 2022? Oh, May. Yeah, must have been 2022. Right. So it went from 2005 to it, like, went 18 years. This is a new production. 
right? And, and honestly, it's really 2005 to 20. So he had 12 years, right? Yeah, tw- year, year 12 years. Um, I don't think that's why. They, even even on time travel show, I don't think it looks good to have a hundredth, and then a sixtieth, and a twentieth. Let alone the fact that it'll be series two or series fifteen uh, within a twenty-year span. Uh, mind-boggling. Uh, let's just move forward. Well, that's the first smart thing you said. Can you just move forward away from your rainbow weird gay shit, right? I, and I don't want to call gay people rainbow weird. It's uh, gay people are normal. Fuck me. The, the, the shit that uh, Russell Day was in is not, right? Is not. But forward isn't easy when the production team is being pulled hither and thither. Uh, here we are now, a snout steep into se- uh, season two. Uh, today, March the 8th, 2024, we're shooting a scene that will live forever in Doctor Who history. No, it won't. And for once, there's no exaggeration. Uh, yes, it is. Because nothing you do will live forever in Doctor Who history. Because I think especially when you get to season two, there'll be so many people not interested and out, right? There'll be so many people say, yeah, I'm done with this. Uh, uh, you, you're not going to get a look in, right? I, and I, it seems to me they're very much going after the TikTok generation. Good luck for that, right? Good luck with that. You're not going to get anyone, mate. You're not going to get anyone. Uh, for example, coming up to where uh, the... Uh, Shooting, uh, they live in Doctor Who history. I mean, uh, I mean for uh, bloody ever. Remember this date uh, and uh, uh, not in agreement next year. Uh, look, look, mate, you told us that Millie Gibson was the greatest thing ever. Oh, she's marvelous. You're fired. Okay. All right, uh, it doesn't hold together, is what I'm trying to tell you. It doesn't. It doesn't hold together. You sound like you're full of shit, mate. So I don't think you say now. I'm like, yeah, whatever, right? Uh, especially when you say, oh, it's going to be the best this time. Yeah, if I could, look, it's more like this. You know, um, that's the wrong one. Do you have the shooty? Oh, here it is. Oh, this is so good. It was so good. Why are you dropping another one straight away? It was so good. Why did it get ratioed? Right. Uh, um, Peter, it says uh, that uh, Russell is showing his real colors now, pushing the BBC under the bus for Disney. Well, they are, you know, his uh, his constituency, his lumsman. This is so good. No, it wasn't, mate. We saw it. It wasn't. Uh, uh, you're full of shit. You stop telling me it's so good. Right. It's time to shit or get off the pot. Right. I mean, that's really where you are. You can't keep telling us it's so good. At least Chris Chibnall didn't fucking do that. At least Chris Chibnall just, like, hid for a few years. Or else they even had oh, it's just a bar, just, uh, just imagine, oh, how marvellous. No, it's not, it's shit, right? Uh, uh, and this is from somebody who actually quite liked Church and Ruby Road. Uh, and I really did. I really did quite like it. Ah. Who knows? Look, uh, 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 Dan, Dan is good for me because he's, he's much more white-pilled than I am, if that's the right word. Well, blue pilled, I think, than me, because he—he's like the trailer really kind of like tingled his uh, his senses. For me, didn't didn't do much at all. Like the first trailer, the the sixth anniversary trailer was actually exciting, right? Because it felt like it was telling you a story and a promise of quality, right? Uh, you didn't get that at all from this new trailer. Uh, where are we up to? <clears throat> Well, season one still demands are still huge. For example, coming up uh, soon, days after Doctor Who magazine was published, you'll have all season one episodes uh, revealed in a in a lovely pre- presentation. Uh, meanwhile, uh, yesterday, we saw we watched the final mix of episode six. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but episode six has slightly less special effects than other episodes. Only slightly. Who cares? Genuinely, who cares? It shouldn't matter, right? It really shouldn't matter. Uh, her ties are real. Um, it's like less effects. Only it's like it's still wild. So again, that you're rating the quality of the episodes on the number of special effects is a very bad sign, right? It's a very bad sign. So uh, as a result, we've had to w- watch it less often. Few, uh, fewer shots to check. Few, uh, fewer sign-offs needed. 
so we hadn't seen it for months. Uh, but it's very timey wimey. The effect on the uh, uh, of that delay was wonderful. Faithful reader, faithful reader, and we loved it. We hooted and we whooped. I don't give a fuck about you hooting and you fucking whooping. So far, you haven't delivered. Other than hooting and fucking whoop, uh, whooping. Uh, what a great story. One of the best monsters ever. Viva uh, live viva section. Russell, mate. Yeah, it's like the time they kept telling us they killed the number two guy in Al-Qaeda. 15th time in, it wasn't that impressive. Uh, but the time first exhaust sweeps around us. Uh, one date stands out, hurtling towards us at the light of smoke and colors. May the 11th, the day Doctor Who gets uh, bent over by Disney and fucked in the arms. All right, the new uh, the new season, Doctor and Ruby, uh, Shooty and Millie, unleashed across time and space. Well, you know, one of them for eight episodes, then she's fired. Uh, um, the ultimate unboxing, except, hold on, uh, e even uh, even that event is merrily timey wimey, uh, wiming it away. What? Already eight weeks of being concentrated into seven. Terrible idea. Terrible idea. You know, I, uh, I, I, I think the weekly rollout is far stronger. Uh, if you have a quality product, right? If you have something like three three body product, which I think is has has re reasonable quality, right? I, I think um, uh, uh, that if it's just if there's no beginning, middle, and end, then drop it all in one go. Uh, but there's just no time to build up in, in, uh, excitement. Uh, the, the way they're doing it's just too dumb. Again, if they dropped it on Saturday at two p.m. New York time. You would get watch parties in New York, right? And you have watch parties everywhere, and and the and you know the fans would act as sheepdogs to the normies and say, "Yeah, come and check this out, so much fun." But Disney's being run by morons, right? Absolute blithering bloody morons. I think I think it's the only fair way of describing. Uh, but let's talk about that next month when DWM stands. On the precipice of transmission with so much fun to come. Uh, I, I'd rather have quality over fun. Because as launch get as the launch gets closer, Doctor Who offers his juggling time zones, quite literally. If you could uh, could have seen the schedule that got Shooty to Los Angeles for the Oscars, scream! Fucking hated it. I'm sick of Shooty being a media fucking darling, right? I'm I, really I am. Right? Tom Baker was less of a media darling when he was a media fucking darling. Right, I, I, look, I don't mind Tom Baker got drunk out of his mind often and fell out, you know, second floor windows in Soho in drinking clubs. Right, he turned up and did his job and made the job the center. Uh, where are we up to? Uh, you have to award the Turner Prize for works of art, uh, a beautiful cat's cradle of double banking, flight operations, extended delay. Get on a fucking plane if it's so important, fly private, you cunt. Get on a plane and cut, go there and come back. If it's not that important, don't. And now you've got a launch coming on both sides of the Atlantic uh, simultaneously with the shoot for season two making its demands. We can still do it. Is Millie Gibson going to be around to help the promotion, you think? You think? I don't think so. Nah. I, the more I, I, I think about that, the more I think she got thrown under the bus. Uh, this is why we write plans and shoot so far in advance. We've been discussing this since 2001. Uh, so we can be okay. I'll say it. We can be time lords. No, the trouble is you've been doing this since 2001. Now, now three years later, it's stale as anything. It really is. It and, and Russell, you are stale, right? The bollocks we've had out of you, you are stale, right? And, and boy, did we give you every freaking chance. We really did. We gave you every freaking chance, and. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 it was just too much woke bollocks, I'm afraid. Right? Like, I, Davros was enough for most people. So, uh, we can be time lost. Uh, timing wiming is under our control. Nothing's under your control. And I promise you, it's going to be spectacular, mind you. The funny thing is, we still end up clock watching, even though even those of us making the show, because we wait, because uh, the wait is agony. We can't wait for you to see the stuff, darling. You want to wait, right? You want to wait because uh, I, I remember Chris Chibnall being that excited. I remember him being like, oh, I can't wait. Really, Chris? Don't feel that way anymore, do you? No, I don't. No, I don't. 
Uh, I'm gonna, and I promise you it's going to be spectacular. Fuck off. Almost there. One more Doctor Who magazine before transmission. Hold tight. TikTok, which is where you want people to watch it. Right? Uh, um, and again, like the firing Billy Gibson. Fucking hell. That's just... Um, when's the next one coming out? It's uh, April 25th. Fine. Which is what? Uh, two weeks be, 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 uh, before transmission. So we get a 16 plus pace supplement and art cards. New season preview Doctor Who uh, meets the Fab Four. Fine. Let's see, let, let's see their take on the um, the trailer. Oop, there you go. Come back. Fuck off. Toxic fandom. Hi. We're toxic and we're fandom. That's cool. Got everyone. Into the unknown. Well, I think we know very well that this is going to. <laughs> Crash and burn. With a new trailer being readied as we went to press, we thought we'd freeze frame our way through the teaser uh, that debuted last December. We're certain we've unscrambled uh, what it all means. Abbey Road Studios, having turned up uh, with a few improvised uh, verses from the Goblin song, the 15th Doctor spends a whole episode sitting in uh, sitting in as a guest vocalist for the, uh, with the Beatles, with his favourite Beatles. Among the tracks they recorded, here comes the song. Oh, fuck. I don't think I can't get through that. I'm sorry. I see that's what I mean. I can't get through this bullshit. Unfucking readable. Right? It's unreadable. Yeah, so we've got a new trailer coming tomorrow. Uh on Sunday, a new trailer. I guess we'll do do a, a trailer reaction then. But like, and like, dude, this isn't selling it as Doctor Who. This is a very camp gay guy in a shitty TARDIS. Right, this is not selling it as Doctor Who. I'm sorry. I wish it was. I I wish it was, but it's not. Sometimes it's nice to have a straight to the point, matter of fact updates like the ones we got before. Uh, got this afternoon for showrun Rossi Davis and stars Judy Gatwa and Millie Gibson's first. Day, blah blah blah. The Sunday, March thirty first. You might want to keep an eye on social media because we're not only getting a brand new trailer, but we're also learning the title of the eight, eight episodes. Okay. Uh, who cares? Uh, we've got upcoming season runs, uh, the Groovy, the Regency. Uh, yeah, I know. And you've also got Super Gay Shooty being super gay, right? Oh, this is so good. What's this? Oh, fuck. It, it, we are. It's just not very good, mate, right? It's not very Are you grinning and winking and uh, mugging to camera? Weirdly enough, isn't doing the trick for most people. How did Christian will get a job? Okay, okay, Christian will job. Doctor Who produced uh, Netflix, uh, Chibnall. Netflix is dabbling Agatha Christie's Seven Dolls. Why? Man, Netflix has more money than sense. He's landed his new gig after launching a, a stage play, his third, and sold his novel. For, I can't believe he got, got uh, work again. Well, okay. All right. Uh, what else would it be? Uh, Agatha Christie uh, says The Seven Dolls of Murder for Netflix. Uh, the series will be written by Chibnall, executive produced by the Crown, executive producer Suzanne Mackey of Orchard Films, and Chris Sussman, uh, Good Omens. Chris, I okay, don't give a shit. Okay, uh, uh, for all those waiting, we're brain rest to hear what uh, Chibnall will be doing after his, he ended this in Doctor Who. Wait no more. He ended it three years ago. Like, literally three years ago. Uh, Agatha Christie is, uh, is hardly a far cry from Doctor Who. Well, his Doctor Who was a far cry from Doctor Who. General will be perfectly at home adapting a story that has already complete since it has been, uh, since he has always been an adept screenwriter. No, he hasn't. Have you ever read his stuff? He's been a shit screenwriter. Even if it likes colouring inside the lines a bit too much for some people's taste. It's not colouring inside the lines. He's just not very good at this job. I don't like how else. How else can we say this to you? He's she's he's she's not very good at this job, right? Bottom line. Uh, so fine. I mean, I guess I guess this is this is where you go go to get things made nowadays, right? You go, you got to go to Netflix because they're basically the only ones left now, right? They, uh, um, I mean, Disney Plus. Disney Plus just puts out limited numbers of like really shit things that nobody watches. 
and they're going to be putting out a lot less soon, much like much like the BBC. They're, they're going to see their drama uh, quotient drop thirteen percent. I reckon the BBC uh, BBC is seeing a drama quotient drop thirteen percent. I think Disney's new new drama is going to drop higher than that, right? To a higher number than that. I don't know what to tell you, right? I don't know what to tell you. It just <laughs> that they had to put out another trailer straight away. To me, sounds like the first trailer fucked up. To me, it sounds like the first trailer was counterproductive, much like everything, everything in this production is, right? It's counterproductive. Oh, uh, God help us. Uh, and it's not going down well as well either, right? It's not going down particularly well. Look at this. Six reasons we're, we're a bit worried about Doctor Who season 14, or season one. Doctor Who's going to be season 14 will be airing on May, tw uh, May 24, but upon reflection, there's some wor wor worries about the new episodes. What, what are you worried about, darling? What's bothering you? Uh, fine. Uh, Doctor Who's season 14 release plan hurts the domestic audience. Well, yes. Okay, she must be English. Because Americans just, they, they, they're like, well, what's the problem? <laughs> like, uh, uh, blimey. Rebecca Darling, maybe you want to get, get some. She got 200 articles. Record focus on a range of topics, including LGBTQ plus stories. Really? Really? Uh, reality, sci-fi, drama, and comedy shows. That's everything. Rebecca covers everything, right? Uh, uh, but Rebecca... Not that, not that confident, right? Not that confident about the uh, uh, upcoming season. Fine. So she doesn't like the rollout. Yes, the, and the rollout is massively counterproductive. It destroys uh, making it. A, you could have made it a, a, a event television, right? You could have made it like literally an event TV show, uh, and you just screwed it up, right? You just like totally, totally screwed it up. Uh, I'm gonna close this. Doink. Fine, so it will be uh, it'll stream on Disney Plus Worldwide, 10th of March. And I'll, yeah, okay, they're talking about that. Doctor has been a staple of British culture uh, since the uh, first broadcast of 63. And again, not understanding that says you don't understand the quintessential Britishness of Doctor Who, right? The quirkiness of it, right? That you're trying to hammer it into your into fit into this uh, very boring Disney hole. Is, is, is going to kill the show, right? Here's, here's Disney's problem. Disney can't help putting their own ideology on everything, right? They bought uh, Star Wars and Marvel because they wanted male brands, and then they turned them into female brands, and they tanked. So instead of turning a female brand, they've uh, uh, turned Doctor Who into a gay brand instead. Natalie, it makes sense in the UK, one would expect to see a Time Lord's latest adventure before the rest of the world. Uh, or it, simultaneously, but like timed around them. By Generation has rewritten Doctor Who's past and future. Yes, it was a shit idea that made no sense, right? And, and the bottom line is this, and I, I thought this about this listening to uh, uh, Ian Levine's excellent interview on Type 40. I mean, man, I can't wait to have Dan back on again to talk about that. It, it, it is. That, that was one of the most interesting things I've seen in a long time, right? I, I It really made me appreciate Ian Levine a lot more. It humanize, it, you know, uh, humanize a lot. But he was talking about um, making changes to the uh, um, uh, was it the uh, uh, animations, the love story uh, animations. And, and he talked about the macro terror. And, and he said, look, the macro terror, actually, they made the change, they made the macro much bigger, and, and it actually worked, right? It working is the it, and it you it's not tangible, so you can't. It's very hard to talk about. But it working is is the most important thing. The uh, what was it web of um, not the web of fear, uh, the uh, abominable snowman, right? That was awful, and all that the woke changes they, they they made to that. It's if it's any good or not. Classic example. It's always been a, a deadly assassin, Robert Holmes' reinvention of Gallifrey, which pissed everybody off at the time, right? Uh, so the Sixth Anniversary of the Giggle introduced uh, Shooty Gutwell as a 15th Doctor, as well as the concept of bi-generation. What a shit idea. This process, which involved David Tennant's Doctor uh, splitting, and why? Splitting off a new body while still retaining his own, changed Doctor Who massively, and the Doctor, uh, Doctor Regenerators always kept audience on the edge of their seats. There's an interesting way for the show to celebrate a new beginning. <laughs> Not really. Uh, with the return of Rusty Davis as showrunner. However, Doctor Who's by generation raised a lot of questions. 
that Davis will hopefully uh, he won't in the upcoming season he won't answer it. They're never going to re reference it again. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. Davis explained that by generation it had applied to every incarnation of Doctor, implying each for, uh, each Doctor original Doctor was still flying around. And so that's basically so they can bring them back with and not worry about them looking looking older, right? Uh, it tells the TARDIS tied into that. Doctor Who season 14 has a lot of mysteries to solve. Well, it has a lot more, and has to do it in, in half the time now. They, they fired their, their, one of their stars. That's true. Like any new installment of Doctor Who, there are plenty of mysteries that need to be solved in season 14. Shooting Cat was first episode. Church and Ruby set up uh, some interesting storylines. Yes, I agree with you, right? Uh, Ruby's parentage, true identity, Mrs. Flood. Uh, uh, before the giggle, Doctor Who even set up mysteries that were expected to be resolved at some point during the sixth anniversary specials. But yeah, talking about the uh, uh, was it Mirror and Gulu talking about the boss, uh, or is um, and, you know, Neil Patrick Harris' toy back was very good. That it was blink and you miss, blink and you miss it. You know, it was should have been thought three three episodes, right? It should have been a mini season, and you could have kept the stories roughly the same. But no. Uh, However, this is a concern that some of these mysteries won't get a satisfying resolution. They won't, because there are too many of them, and you're, and you're changing your, your, your one of your main characters after eight episodes, uh, seven weeks, I should say. Uh, during his original tenure as Shannon, uh, David was reliable in wrapping up character stories well, though uh, there were some gaps. For example, uh, Jenny, uh, Georgia Tennant, never got an on-screen explanation about her fate after the Doctor's daughter. Well, the reason that happened was because uh, Moffat asked to write her, uh, uh, write her back. He was pl planning on using her. Uh, and it said the Doctor, uh, Doctor Who fans learn about what happened in the uh, what happened through the comic miniseries, The Lost Dimension. Uh, it, that's not canon. While the admissions might take more uh, more than one season to be answered, uh, it's hope the conclusions are worth the wait. I don't think they will. Ruby Sunday won't be a long term companion. She was supposed to be, All right? And, and absolutely the strongest part of this production all right speaking of somebody who's watched every second of it she is the strong and it's not just because she's fucking gorgeous right she is the strongest part of this production she's the most relatable uh you know she's a character who you are emotionally sy sympathetic for and she has fantastic tits i mean really what else is there to say ladies and gentlemen uh, um i think i think that's a winning argument in of itself uh, all the seven costumes have, uh, haven't been unusual in Rossi Davis' history in Doctor Who. It was uh, still a shock when it was announced that Millie Gibson would only uh, be a full time companion in season 14. Yeah, and again, they're giving her an episode in season 15 or season two to wrap up a storyline. Despite online rumors circulating, it's unknown why Millie Gibson will not. She was fired, you moron! Ooh, why is she not continuing? Uh -huh, uh -huh, I don't know. Yeah, she didn't seem that happy about it. However, it's been confirmed that the uh, actress uh, Vashta Narada, Varada Situ, will be portraying Doctor Who's newest companion. It just doesn't do it for me. Uh, only one reason Ruby Sunday Doctor, uh, one season of Ruby Sunday Doctor Who, there's a lot of pressure to have a, it be an impactful character she already is, right? And a fitting ending. Doctor Who has, it's not going to work, right? I, you, I already know the way they're going to put it together. It's just going to be clunky and fail. Uh, although they did return to the show later on, blah, 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 for character development. Uh, yeah, no, it's a bad idea. Uh, can the 14th Doctor really not return? Um, I think he's supposed to be returning in season two finale. That that was the rumor. Uh, it, it's a terrible idea, right? It's a terrible idea. You know, firstly, David Tennant had had lost it, right? He wasn't the same person anymore. Again, all this, like, relentless woke bullshit saying, oh, children, it's kind to you to let you cut your bollocks off. we got to let you cut your bollocks off, children. We don't want to be mean to you. Okay. Uh, 14 retired and settled on Earth. What a stupid ending that was. So in interviews, he said he's not going back. Uh, you don't trust the word. 15 Doctor could face issues in the past. Um, yeah, I guess... But, like, you know, it's the doctor. You know, he should be able to get around it. I mean, you know, look, Martha worked it out. Uh, it's not very good, is it? It's not very good, ladies and gentlemen. Let's be fair. It's just not very good. 
My name's Fila Beck in the Rabbi from Another Planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!